All right, when we expand our simplified polynomials, basically we're going to have problems given to us where we're <coughs> adding, subtracting, multiplying those polynomials out. If we're multiplying like we have here, then really all you need to worry about going to multiply all of this one out. This negative is just something we're going to carry through. So starting with the numbers, I just multiply those. Get negative 6 in front for my uh, eventual product here. But with the variables, variables you got like bases. So you got to remember your rules for multiplying with like bases so you would add your exponents. So for the a's, when I multiply those out, got a to the fifth. And for the b's, when I multiply those out, B to the first over here, B to the third, that'd be B to the fourth. It's as simple as that if we're just multiplying a couple of, uh, these would be known as monomial expressions. So like I said, with polynomials, at least as we get started here, we're just going to be adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them out. Um, one where we've got a combination of all those. If I take 10 times a quantity of X squared minus 5X, plus 4. I'm going to subtract from that a quantity of x minus 2. I'm going to add to that 5 times a quantity of x squared minus 7x plus 1. So you've been taught when you're simplifying and you've got parentheses involved, you want to do some distributing. So we distribute our 10 through here and we've got 10x squared minus 50x plus 40. Got to be careful here with this negative. Do have to distribute that through to the x minus 2. We know that changes the sign, so it's minus x now and plus 2. And then you've got your parentheses over here with the 5 multiplied to the front, so 5x squared. Uh, distributing <coughs> the 5 through, we got minus 35x. Distribute the 5 through the 1, got five at the end. So you get rid of the parentheses first by doing distributing. Um, after that, since we're <coughs> adding and subtracting, we're just combining like terms. So like terms to combine, if I go in order of my powers from uh, the top to the bottom, I'd have 10x squared and 5x squared, right? That'd be 15x squared. Takes care of these guys. As far as x's are concerned, I've got a negative 50x, uh, a minus 1x, and a minus 35x, right? So that's minus 86x. That takes care of these guys. And our remaining constants would be 40, 2, and 5, so 47. That would be our simplified expression. <coughs> You see in the wording of the directions the idea of expanding. Um, when we expand something out, we're basically multiplying something out. A better example where this can be seen, we try this problem here. Take 2 times the quantity n minus 3 squared plus 9 times the quantity n minus 7. Like we just reviewed on the last one, you see the parentheses, you want to distribute some stuff through, but you also got to be aware of your order of operations. When I see something raised to a power like this, I've got to remember that means take that quantity and multiply it times itself as many times as that power tells me. So I have to take that n minus 3, multiply by n minus 3, basically foil it out. Now, when I foil this out, if I kind of bring all this down, Foiling it out, I get n squared. Outside be minus 3, inside be minus 3, so that's minus 6n. Last would be positive 9 because it's negative 3 times negative 3. So far, all I've done is expand out that binomial expression. If I bring down the rest of it, bring down the 2, bring down the 9, and if I want to go ahead and distribute that 9 through, I could be 9n minus 63. 
this stage, I just need to distribute that 2 so I can collect like terms, right? If I distribute that 2, I've got 2n squared minus 12n plus 18 plus the 9n minus the 63. Combine the like terms, you've got 2n squared. Got a couple of n's here, so it'd be minus 12 plus 9, so minus 3n. And for our constants, we got a positive 18, a negative 63, so that would be negative 45. There's your simplified expression. All right, let's move on to some factoring. Here we're going to factor and simplify. Basic factoring to start. Let's take a, uh, a binomial expression of 3b cubed minus 21. Talk about the first rule of factoring. First rule of factoring is find the greatest common factor. So if we have a greatest common factor we can take out, we should do that. So here, you do have a greatest common factor. What is it? It's 3. You take a 3 out. When you take a 3 out, you're dividing it out of each of these, right? And however many terms you start with, that's how many terms I have to have inside here. So I divide 3 back into the first term. You've got b cubed left. Take 3, divide into the second term. Got minus 7 left. Whenever you factor out a greatest common factor, you do look at this remaining part and consider if you can factor it further. In this case, we're not going to be able to go any further. So that's the best we can do for this one. And remember with factoring also, to check your answer, if you multiply it back out, you should be able to get back over here. In fact, sometimes that whole multiplying idea is what helps us factor things in the first place. Let's see if I got an example of one of those here. Yeah, speaking of which, here's an example of what I'm referring to right here x squared minus 5x minus 24. It's quadratic. So whenever I factor out a quadratic, I just reverse the FOIL process. I see these three terms. I see that quadratic form. I set up two binomial expressions over here. It's only an x squared, so I know on the first spots it's x and x. And in the last spots, it's got to multiply to give me that negative 24. So you think about values that multiply to give you 24. If you choose 8 and 3, it makes sense to do so. Because as you check the outside, you have 3x. As you check the inside, you have 8x. And you know that if you subtract those two, you can get back to a 5. So if we make this minus and this plus, you've got that negative 8x. You've got that positive 3x. That gives you the negative 5x back. Something that combines really both of these examples, 4 and 5, at least both ideas discussed there. If we take 2x squared minus 22x, and we add 60. <coughs> Remember, any factoring problem, first rule is find a greatest common factor that you can take out if there is one. Is there a greatest common factor here? It's 2. So if you take a 2 out, 2 comes out. There's three terms here to start, so three terms have to be inside. You're dividing 2 back into all of these. That leaves us with x squared minus 22 divided by 2, 11x, plus 60 divided by 2, 30. So you have factored. But have you factored completely? Well, not necessarily, because you still have to look at this quadratic that's left and see if you can break that up. If we can break it up, then the 2 is going to come along for the ride, because that's still part of this factored expression. We'll try to break up this quadratic just like we did in example 5 there. 
Okay, you got x, you got x, because that's the first position. And then yeah, what multiplies to give you 30? You think of those pairs. If you choose 5 and 6, and here make them both negative, outside you got negative 6x, inside you got negative 5x, that gives you negative 11x. So there's your factored expression. All right, as long as we're on the quadratic theme, let's try this one. Start once again, seeing if there's a greatest common factor that you can pull out of this. Is there a greatest common factor you can take out? No. So that does present a little bit of a challenge, especially since that lead coefficient there is not a 1. It's playtime now in the factoring. All right, as you consider factoring this out, if you use this reverse FOIL process, some trial and error is involved. So you could start with the 12x squared, you could start with a 4, it doesn't matter. You know that the 12x squared, those combinations go in the first spots, right? You know with the 4, those combinations go in the last spots. So, I don't know, what do you want to start with? You want to start with the 4 since there's fewer factors? Okay, if we start with the 4, you want to try a combination of 1 and 4 or 2 and 2? Two and two. All right, we'll try two and two. We'll see where this takes us. If we try two and two, now I'm going back to this 12x squared. Got some factor pair ideas for 12, right? What do you want to try in these lead positions? Any ideas? Six and two? Well, six and two, three and four, all possibilities. What do we want to try? Six and two. Six and two. All right. So 6x and 2x. If I try 6x and 2x, if I multiply the outside, I'll go ahead and write it out here, that's 12x. If I multiply the inside, that's 4x. Is that combination going to give me a 13x back? No. So I need to try something different, don't I? You want to try 4 and 1? So 4 here, 1 there. Got to be willing to try some combinations. Got to be willing to write some things down, erase, take some chances. Live on the edge. So you try 4 and 1 like that. Is that going to work? 6x. Got 8x. Is that going to give me 13x back? No. So we dig in the 4 and the 1. We want to go back to the 2 and the 2. We want to change maybe the 6 and the 2 in the lead positions. Man, I love factoring, don't you? Change the 6 and the 2. What do you want to change them to? You don't know. I got to change them to something. 3 and 4. All right. Try a 3 here, 4 there. Oh, maybe we're on to something. Let's see. Outside, you got 3x. Inside, you've got 16x. 16x, 3x, does that give me a 13? Yes. The crowd goes wild. So if you make that a positive 16, a negative 3, that will give you the positive 13 back, meaning this needs to be positive here, that needs to be negative there. Your factored expression would be 3x plus 4 times 4x minus 1. Woo, that took a little thought. All right, moving on. That last one had a little drama to it. This one... Hopefully not so much. 9x squared minus 4. This would be known as what? It is a quadratic. That is correct. I heard difference of two squares. All right, we've got a perfect square here of 9, a perfect square here of 4. Of course, x squared is a perfect squared. Perfect squares. Difference of two squares, factors to two binomial expressions. Where? In the lead positions, we take the square root of the lead guy here. Square root of 9x squared would be 3x. In the last positions, we take the square root of this last guy being 4. Square root of that would be 2. And then the rule is just change your signs, right? Plus, minus, or minus, plus. That's your factored expression for a difference of two squares. That was a nice one to catch our breath with. As long as we're on this uh, binomial kick where we're subtracting, let's take x cubed and subtract 8. Anybody 
Anybody recognize what those or this expression is? Difference of cubes. Now would be a good time to review how to factor a difference of cubes. Difference of cubes, a cubed minus b cubed. That factors to a binomial expression of <coughs> a minus b times a trinomial expression of a squared plus ab plus b squared. And as long as we're at it, sum of cubes has a very similar factorization. Sum of cubes would be a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So you might want to keep those handy since we're not used to seeing those quite as often as the difference of two squares. Right, difference of two squares like we saw in number eight, pretty common. Sum of two squares can't be factored. Just to make sure that's clear. But difference of cubes, sum of cubes, there you go. If this is a difference of cubes, trying to break this one up, you know, what is all this A and B stuff? All A and B are, it's the cube roots of these guys. So when I set up my binomial expression to start things off here, I'm taking the cube root of x cubed. I'm getting x. And I'm taking the cube root of 8. The cube root of 8 is 2. I'm subtracting those. So relating to this pattern over here, x is my a, 2 is my b. Once I know that, setting up the rest of this, you've got x squared then, plus a times b, so it's 2 times x plus b squared, well, let's see, b squared is going to be 2 squared, so 4. There's your factorization for a difference of cubes. All right, the last one we might come across, last type, would be one that's got four terms in it. Say we have 2x cubed minus 6x squared plus 5x minus 15. You're asked to factor, you've got four terms. You remember what it is you're supposed to do. Don't remember. You've got to group things. Factor by grouping. So you group your first two terms, you group your second two terms. In the first two terms, we factor out the greatest common factor. So the first two terms, 2 would definitely be one of those factors. And x squared, x squared would be one of those factors. So we take a 2x squared out of these first two terms. We write inside parentheses what remains. And since there were two terms here, it has to be two terms in here. OK, so it would be x minus 3. Now the trick with the factoring by grouping, when you factor this next expression, whatever's left over inside the parentheses needs to be the same as what I had up here. It okay, needs to be the same as what I had in the first part. So what are we going to take out? Take out a 5, and it's going to be a positive 5 at that. All right, turns out the greatest common factor there is 5. Conveniently, now inside the parentheses, you've got x minus 3 left. To finish this thing off, what you do is you take this x minus 3, you bring that to the front. In doing that, you factored it out. So what remains are these other two terms, the 2x squared plus the 5. There's your factorization. 